Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at New Teen Titans number one and two from 1984 by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. It was one of my favorite comic books of all time. This is like such a high point in the like uh, run of the Titans. So I'm super excited to show it to you guys. So make sure you hit subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, hit like. I'm gonna cue the intro and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, so here we go. So uh, Teen Titans was like one of my favorite comic books. Um, when my brother introduced me to comic books, we were mainly Marvel fans. And um, I <clears throat> first saw George Perez's art on Teen Titans number 30, where Tara was introduced to the team. Uh, Tara joins the Titans and had her like and all the Titans, like, around the logo formed by Rock, and it was so cool, like, life-changing, the art was beautiful, blew me away, it was, you know, so young and didn't really know comics or Perez's history, but that's all I needed, and I became a lifelong Titans fan, loved the Wolfman Perez run, and, um, you know, quickly learned to like a lot of other DC titles as well, and uh, Teen Titans was so popular. It was like basically the X-Men for DC Comics and um, they were compared a lot, but it definitely was its own comic book in its own right, like a completely amazing book. It's relatable characters. It read like a family. The characters were so three-dimensional and that's a testament to the collaboration of Marv Wolfman and George Perez. And I am going to open this book, I promise you. So it was so popular. They had this thing where they were doing like a, like a direct market um, as opposed to just the newsstand version. There's a huge history of that. I'm not going to go into that right now. But if that means anything to you, um, the Titans was successful on the newsstand. And then they, you know, wanted like a more deluxe style book. So they did this line of Baxter books. I think the Omega Men um, predates the Titans with this, you know, better printing, um, thicker paper. The newsstand books were like 75 cents and this is like $1.25. So you are paying 50 cents more, but I think it's worth it for the better paper and the printing. Um, interestingly enough, um, George Perez famously had a big reaction to the way the art looked in this new printing. Like, he felt the colors were way too bright and garish. We'll get into that. But this cover is gorgeous. Um, I feel like they had the technology to do, you know, like, more um, complex process printing on covers. So you would be able to have, like, painted covers and things like that. But Perez is definitely getting a little more artistic. Every once in a blue moon, he would cover his own work. And I think that he is definitely covering these. I was super little. I lived in Las Vegas at the time. My family moved there after my mom's first divorce from Ohio. And um, that's when we discovered this comic book store called Page After Page. It was amazing. They had a big glass window in the front and they would always recreate. I think they were just like uh, doing like a... Uh, you know, a projection and tracing it basically of like hot comic book covers. And this was one of them. And the anticipation building up for this coming out was like so tremendous for me. I, I was becoming an, you know, an aspiring artist myself and really copied off of Perez's style so much and um, definitely learned a lot from the master. Love the ad. Can't, you know, some people say, oh gosh, I can't believe you didn't talk about such and such an ad. And I will talk about this one, the Superpowers Collection. Um, shockingly, I did not have Wonder Woman, although I don't know why. I think I thought she was a little kind of ugly or something, which in retrospect, I don't know why I just didn't get her. But I did have Green Lantern, Robin, 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 Aquaman, 
and I think the Flash. Those were, like, always my favorites. Now, I wish I would have had Brainiac, because, like, that's, like, one of my favorite designs of Brainiac. I think it is so cool. I love it. And this Lex Luthor design is very cool as well. George Perez designed that, in case you didn't know. Great costume designer. <laughs> as we go to Jericho. And I know that, like, it's probably not holding up. It's standing the test of time. Jericho's costume. But it has a lot of classic elements that Perez always put into his um, designs. <clears throat> he designed Cyborg. He designed Jericho. He designed Nightwing. And he designed Starfire. And metallic elements is one of his things. Uh, asymmetrical designs. And I don't know. I just love his art. He is penciling and inking these first couple of issues. So Mark Wolfman and... George Perez, co-creators um, and co-editors. So Marvin Wolf, Marvin Wolf, Marvin George are plotting together <laughs> to take over the world. And uh, Marv is writing the dialogue while Perez is doing the penciling and inking. And I love Perez's inks over himself. Like this was like before he started using markers to ink himself. And I definitely prefer like this look. It just looks a little sleeker to me. But I'm never going to say no to Paris art, no matter who's inking it or if he's using um, pen and ink, brushes, markers, or a freaking piece of charcoal. I just love it. There's so much going on, so much choreography, so much goodness. The Titans look so good and how they should. I love Wonder Girl. I always love this panel where it's sort of breaking the border and flying out like this is Perez taking advantage of the new printing process and being able to do full bleeds. I don't, which a full bleed means that, so the gutter existed because, I don't know, you're getting unevenness in the printing or it's not going to show up and you were pretty much limited by that. And, you know, I think that um, with the new printing, you were able to sort of go to full bleed, which means, you know, go to all the way to the edge of the page. And um, so that's why you're kind of seeing this a lot more, whereas you wouldn't otherwise. It's funny because you talk about uh, like getting used to the new printing and the way that the colors are gonna look. Um, George Perez, Perez definitely lamented the coloring and how it turned out like way brighter and different. Like I feel like this probably, the other thing that I kind of notice is like, the color feels like it's going over the black ink and I feel like that should not be happening because it sort of dilutes and dulls and sort of muddies the blackness a little bit, if you know what I mean. It's funny because at the time, and I don't know if this is just aged, even though these have been in boxes for more years than I care to admit, but, um, you know, I think it pretty much looks as close as it was to when it first came out. Um, and there's a scene coming up where I can give you a direct example of how Paris felt about that. Some interesting color choices here. Is this Adrienne Roy? Yeah, Adrienne Roy. She's like the usual Titans colorist. Um, uh, Jericho is like definitely a visual character since he's mute. Um, son of Terminator, AKA Slade Wilson, Deathstroke whatever you want to call him. He's a mutant. I believe the first, one of the first characters he's using his power. He establishes co eye contact with uh, his uh, victim, I guess, and is able to take over their body and basically just, you know, do what he wants, what he wants with their body. Anyway, great um, full page, like, Perez vertical panel. Perez utilized a lot of uh, long vertical panels and I loved it. He's such a great artist in the fact that like he is such the consummate comic book storyteller as well. There's so much detail going on here. So many characters on one page, so many paddles, and yet it still manages to not be cluttered and still have this great flow. I always love this. I love the open panel here, but like all the detail on this which now looks horribly dated, like control panel, but, and then, you know, we have the familiarity of Titan's Tower, 
with the portraits of them on the wall. And I just love this so much. Jericho using his sign language, Changeling just hanging out as an ape, like using his power. Like who wouldn't do that? Like if I could turn into animals, I'd be like a different animal every second of the day. Great touching moment with Jericho and Raven. He goes to, like she's like uh, succumbing to the darkness within the fact that she's half demon have pacifist her father is trigon the demon lord and um she hangs out in her bedroom her physical appearance is succumbing to the evil as well she's starting to get like a receded hairline to make room for those two extra trigon eyes and the foreshadowing is amazing warlord ad it's interesting to see this kind of printing on the baxter paper because this is more the traditional like dots Yet, I think this is, hmm, interesting. This is the page that uh, gave George Perez a heart attack. He was like, no wonder why the Tamaranians haven't won a war. Um, their ship is colored so brightly. You could see them coming like millions of miles away. I thought that was funny. Obviously a different experience for the fan. Like I did not think that as a you know, young child reading for this for the first time. I just said, oh my God, I love Tamaran. I love Starfire. I love her planet. I love her people. They look amazing. This is so happy. Her mom's so pretty. What a pretty ship. And I pretty much still feel the same way looking at it all these years later. Such a great Prera skyline. So gorgeous. Titan's Tower, obviously instantly recognizable. I think this is a little more taking advantage of like the color holds and the little tricks they could do with printing. And it's this is interesting to note, um, just taken from reading interviews with Perez and stuff. Um, he, as he evolved as an artist, he more or less like started thinning her out and giving her deep, deeper cheekbones and stuff. But they sort of incorporated that into the story as well to make it seem like it was a natural progression of her oh, becoming darker and giving into the darkness. And then you have um, Jericho here playing a guitar. He's supposed to be very artistic. And you can see visibly the scar on his neck um, when he was a child. He was taken hostage and um, his father, Terminator, like, uh, didn't save him quite in time, and he had his throat slashed, which made him a mute. So that's why he uses sign language. He can hear. He's not a deaf mute, but he is a mute. And he's an artist. I see him drawing his mother. It's so funny because I feel like they've hinted at sort of making him gay, and I think that was never Perez's intention. He just had him be, like, a sensitive soul and artistic, and actually he was supposed to be kind of a player when it came to women. But there's such a gay sensibility about him. And I don't need everyone to be gay, I promise. I don't, I'm not woke like that. But um, it just feels like it would have been, like, pretty natural. Now, this kind of creeps me out in retrospect. So Jericho thinks he's helping, but without permission, <laughs> just walking into Raven's room and, you know, entering her body and just going into her psyche and sort of being part of her world. I don't know. Especially with the way it turns out. Like, look at all this chaos. Like, all these bodies. And this is Perez. Like, artistry from hell. Amazingly sick, gorgeous art. Like, so crazy good. Like, you've got so much going on with the storytelling. And you've got, like, you know, this great effect with Jericho. And sort of entering your physical body, but then sort of having it carry over to where he's entering, I don't know, this dream realm or whatever's happening here. And this bridge with all these bodies on it. And the silhouette of, or the, you know, profile of Raven um, and sort of a silhouette that makes the frame of the, I mean, there's just so much gorgeous artistry going on here and it just keeps on going and, I mean, this whole, like, funnel effect, but there are, like, faces in torment. Like, it's just so crazy and good and gorgeous. 
I'm thinking I kind of would like to see this. First of all, I would love to see this in black and white. DC isn't really hot on the artist editions, but if there was ever a time to do a George Perez artist, Teen Titans artist edition, whether DT, DC published it themselves or not, the time is right. But such, such great imagery here. Like, I feel like you're just like looking at, you know, it, it reminds you of like the sort of gimmick, for lack of a better word of, and also the, the secret weapon of comic book storytelling is because while you do have a story going on here within the page, you step back and you can look at the page and still get something out of that too. So it's so great. Oh my God, such a great um, double page spread there. You're getting like all these Kirby dots that are just so freaking amazing. And I remember just like being blown away by the sheer artistry of this and I love Jericho just sort of being blasted by this and being exposed as not being really Raven and just Trigon not being down for that at all. Um, Raven wakes up, she freaks out. Titan's Tower, here's, this was kind of controversial, I guess, but Starfire and Nightwing sharing a bed with no clothes on. And um, Marv Wolfman saying, well, they're like 18 and 19 years old, so of course they would be sleeping together. Whatever, fine with me. Um, just such a great panel. So cool. Raven peaced out. She was freaked out, rightly so. Jericho was inside. <laughs> anyway, um, Jericho's signing his brains out. And they know they hear laughter coming, Trigon laughing. Trigon and Raven and Starfire were all kind of tied into the reason for the Titans coming together. I think Raven did it, wanted to form them to fight the evil Trigon that she knew she'd have to face one day. And I believe that comic book store also did this cover as well on their front window and once again blown away by this. Like, I don't know, I just had never seen art like this in comic books before and forever burned in my brain. I just love this stuff here. And it's like the Titans having a seance to contact Raven, who isn't even dead. And I just love that too. I've often thought that, you know, instead of using cell phones, we should use seances because if you can contact the dead through a seance, I mean, it would be seemingly much easier to contact the living, right? Okay, so here we go with more Perez artistry and him sort of like pushing the boundaries of his art and just trying to do like whatever he can with the new printing that he can pull off. And this, uh, you know, in regular comic book printing, you have to ink the art. It just like the pencils won't reproduce properly. And so he's doing like this sort of a, uh, Azareth. Is Azareth the place that Raven is from? I think it is. And um, so that's sort of like a different effect. He's got all these Kirby dots in the background that are freaking amazing, love it. But then he's doing like full pencils and shading here. And I think this kind of actually delayed the um, release of this book just because he thought it would be easier to do pencils and the joke was on him that um, it wasn't. Um, so beautiful here. I just love this so much. Um, we have Wonder Girl flying over the skyline in this dark foreboding sky. This is like so cool the way Perez draws these dark clouds. I love them. Here's his sit up Perez cityscape where you never see the street, even though you're looking down and it's just so cool. I love it so much. And so they need to find Raven and they don't know how. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters or second best Lilith, the empath. I was like too young or missed the boat on Titans West or whatever. I wasn't really familiar with the character of Lilith and I immediately fell in love with her when she came to the um, pages of this Baxter Titans. I was hoping she would stick around more. I think she leaves after, certainly by issue 10. 
but um, I really like the character. I love psychic characters. They're always my favorite, any sort of psychic ability. And she's supposed to be a precognitive for whatever that's worth, worth, but it can lead a seance. And this is kind of cool. The room gets kind of haunted and I love this effect here. More Kirby Crackle. Just so many fun things and elements. Like Donna's like trying to pull the door open and she can't, she can't, she can't. But then the demonic forces give way and like it totally crushes under her Amazonian strength. And this is pre-crisis. So she's still an Amazon, even though it was uh, a treatment from the Purple Ray on Paradise Island. But you know, you know how that goes, right guys? Wally West has retired from the Titans. You know, um... Uh, I guess it was uh, around t Tara, the conclusion of Tara, you know, Robin, Dick Grayson quit being Robin and Kid Will, Wally West quit being Kid Flash. But he's emotionally tied to Raven, so they're going to recruit him for this mission. And Fran, Spike, Psycho Fran, um, Magenta, I think is her code name. Love the issue where she goes crazy. It's coming for reviews, guys. Don't worry. But anyway, so they have a seance led by Lilith. And um, <laughs> I love psychic stuff. I love ghosts. I love the paranormal. So I was dying and gagging even as a young child, just like loving this and eating it up. And the press artistry is just so amazing. Like those eyes, even in black and white, you could definitely know which character is which and that's the beauty of what Perez brought to the Titans is he just gave us real people who we sort of got to know and love and you know they were definitely distinctive. Could you imagine having like a freaking subscription to comics and Ellen Moore's Swamp Thing shows up? Another gorgeous double page spread so beautiful. I think this was actually inked, not by Perez, maybe by Romeo Tanghal or something for, like they reprinted it for the newsstand and it was a little tragic how the inked version came out, if I remember correctly. Maybe I have them somewhere, hopefully I can do a comparison someday, but I just remember like loving these pencils and just like, cause it's always, 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 always about the art for me. So any type of like, extra artistry like that, like, is definitely speaking to me as a reader. But you can't discount the heart and soul of what's going on in the characters that I love so dearly. They'll always be very close to my heart. I love the Titans so much. And this is kind of chilling, just this whole Raven. Um, you know, they really built up to this since the beginning, like, since issue one of the new Teen Titans, like, complete relaunch or whatever and so I just love this panel here that is so cool like nobody draws Raven like Perez obviously he created the character so he has the upper hand but it's just so cool and to see her red skin like you know you're in trouble and then to get like this reveal here is just so cool and then her you know she can separate her soul from her body and now her soul self which was black before is now this like glowing red. It was always so cool. And then she sort of transforms Titan's Tower into this like, uh, like demonic foreboding, like rock formation to usher in the, you know, I guess rebirth or something of Trigon the Terrible, her father. And like, such a great comic book. Love this so much. So much Kirby going on in the background here. Uh, Batman and the Outsiders, another favorite. Love that Perez always drew like the letter column art. So good. Love it so much. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. That was the new Teen Titans Baxter series from 1984, issues one and two. Some of my favorite comic books of all time. Uh, Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Hit that like button, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. Thanks, guys.